Good morning, church. Before we begin, uh, welcome to this 9 o'clock service to St. James, both here and online. The Lord be with you. Before I start, just want to sh share uh, some words from Philippians, uh, Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, in chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. I know there's a lot of uh, anxiety and stress perhaps and sadness um, that you see around the world. Some may be upset Trump's um, president's victory. <laughs> but the Lord tells us this in Philippians 4, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May I invite you all to rise. We've come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness for our sins and to seek his grace that through his son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. If we say we have no sin, 
We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May I, may I invite you all to have a seat and take a few moments and allow the Holy Spirit to search your hearts for anything that needs to be brought up for repentance and forgiveness. Let us now together confess. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow man in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As a forgiven people, church, let us stand to praise God with great joy. Before there was light Walked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity's cry Left His throne to wake as a child He became like the least of us Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the roaring lion, oh, be still and behold Him.
reason that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you
that stone was smooth for good for the land that conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all to come to the Father are restored and the church of Christ was born of as a baby to the cross and to be raised back to eternal life. Father Lord, as we enter missions month and in this season of Advent, Lord, I pray that you continue to remind us to shine your light and to reflect your glory into this world that we may be your witnesses to all the earth. Church, let us pray the collect together. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Luke. Chapter 2, verses 41 to 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, 
Your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 1996, he and his family relocated to Yunnan, China, where he was involved in poverty alleviation, community development, and training of village health workers. They stayed and served at Yunnan, China for 15 years till 2010. Having returned to Singapore, many areas that God has led him to, for example, being a resident fellow at NUS, or be, be it teaching family medicine in the School of Medicine in NUS, or be, be it ministering to migrant workers, or even the uncle at a coffee shop, those he saw as his mission field. Dr. Tan is married to his wife, Lei Chin, and they have two grown children, and they worship at Bethesda Frankel Estate Church. Church, would you join me to welcome Dr. Tan. Thank you. Is the mic okay? I'm very happy to be back at uh, St. James. Two things I like about St. James. Your t-shirt. Those wearing t-shirt, please wave. <laughs> so every time I come, I collect a set of every colors. Uh, tonight, I'm going to Northeast India. I'll wear them every day and then leave them there, this t-shirt. Second thing I like, your Vika. You call it Vika? Xiang Guan, right? Bethesda Franker? We were in Sunday school together. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, Vanessa Franco is a home church. Yeah. We we're sad to lose him from the brethren's, brethren churches. But Okay, so today we're going to talk about missions. And a key verse uh, is from Luke 2.52. To me, missions is gratitude, response to what God has given us. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. That's our key verse for today. As shared, when I was 35 years old, my wife at that time was teaching in NTU. We uh, went to Yunnan to work. I, I never passed Chinese in my school before. Okay? I now teach medical school in Chinese. Okay? Uh, but uh, I always thought I would go to India or Pakistan because I never passed Chinese, right? And uh, in the brethren system, we don't have clergy. And we are Peranakan church. So when I first, I always tell this story, when we were first preparing to go to China, because they knew we were sent by a church, they was asked, which in a clergy church is evangelist, right? My friend answered, <laughs> And uh, I thought, this guy, no harm, let him come. Okay, that's how we started. Like any young parents, we thought we'll stay for three to five years because children must come back for primary school. The best thing I've done, no kids. Ah. The best thing I've done as a missionary father is my, my kids didn't take PSLE. Clap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we did the idea of caring for the poor by sharing knowledge and loving people. That's what we spent our years doing. We didn't expect, by God's grace, we'll stay 15 years. And uh, so we came back, and both my wife and I found that one way to re-enter Singapore was through the school. And we applied to LKY School, uh, School of Policy, and surprise, they gave us scholarship at 55 years old to re-enter the system. And studying at 55 years old with all these bright people who are half our age. I remember once... They do do some econs, complicated calculations that needed 
tangent and cosine. I took out my logbook. <laughs> and the other student said, uh, Dr. Tan, what is that? I said, logbook, cosine, cosine, tangent, don't you need logbook? He said, no, we use calculator. I also took out my calculator. My calculator got plus minus divide. <laughs> so, so we enjoy our time. Uh, so Bethesda Frankel is a very generous church. After coming back from the mission field, they support us for one year. Okay, for us to re-enter. And uh, we chose to enter to school uh, because my children asked me why. I say, once you start working, uh, you realize that being a student is luxury. <laughs> Just wear Bermudas, go to class, and then the Harvard prof asked me, hey, Dr. Tan, what do you want to learn? I said, I want to learn in half an hour what you learn in five years at Harvard. <laughs> and don't need to pay the fees. Okay. So we taught uh, my wife, uh, an accountant, homemaker for 17 years, came back and went back to SMU to teach accountancy. God bless her. And then I went back to NUS. But in 2020, since our kids were grown up, set your parents free, you know. We have been visiting, we transit to small islands in Indonesia. One is Pulau Sumba. And uh, we do community development again. And one of the things I do with young people is to plant trees, okay? So one of the outreach program is to plant trees. In Singapore, we take trees for granted, but in, in these islands that were in the colonial history, devastated because they had sandalwood. Sandalwood is very precious. They all chopped down. The huge trees today are still barren. Okay, so city boy have to learn all over again. If I do a project of tree planting in a hostel like this, what trees will you plant? What types of trees will you plant? Don't tell me Wang Mao Sang Wang. No, 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 don't have. Okay, so discussion time. What trees will you plant? What type of trees? Coconut. Coconut. What else? Papaya. Papaya. So these are fruit trees, right? So Singaporean, okay. I'm a teacher at heart. Huh? So these are things that provide nutrition. Okay, first end. What other trees? What categories? Papaya. Ah, fruits, ah. Banana. Jambu, banana, nangka. All the fruit trees you plant. Fruits. Okay, next category. Other than fruits, what else tree will you plant? Sorry? This PSLE question. All you PSLE mom better know this question, okay? First one is nutrition, fruit tree. Second? Shady trees. Uh, it has to be shady trees, provide wood. The second end I'm looking for is, it has to be native. The cedar of Lebanon is very beautiful, but you don't go and plant cedar of Lebanon in in uh, Pulau Sumba. What else? Next one is we contribute. Nitrogen fixators. Okay, you make the soil become fertile. This is a picture of missions. There's a fruit, becoming a Christian, there's a fruit. There's shade, right? It's native, becoming a Christian is contextualized. We uh, e. Stanley Jones, uh, missionary, British missionary to England, was the only white that the Indians voted as their bishop. And he says, don't bring the gospel tree to India, bring the gospel seed. So churches should be contextualized. Okay? Nitrogen fixators make the soil fertile. And when we done this project with all different communities of different faith backgrounds, we read Psalms 1. Blessed is the man that is like a tree planted by living waters. It's an entry in the community. So far, I won't have anybody, wise old men, mothers, children. Nobody disagrees with Psalms 1. It's a very really, really good entry point. Blessed is the man like a tree planted by living waters. And for climate change, for Singapore branding, it's wonderful to plant trees. So think about that on your next trip. So we plant trees as youth outreach. And today back at youth. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. And this word favor in Greek is charis, of which there is, wisdom, there is grace. For me, missions is really bringing our vocational skills, our family skills into the marketplace. This is young gone. DBS is beside the Bible Society, hand in hand. Can you see that? We don't divorce the two. We bring them together. Whatever skill you are in, IT, business, education, bring it. 
dedicate three to five years of your life, bring your skills into a world where young people need employment. The tent maker don't just go there and make jobs, take jobs, you make jobs. You create jobs and employment for people. This is a big challenge before us. 20212, I visited University of Mandalay. Last week, I was just at the refugee camps. The war is horrible. Children are dying. So, uh, in the clinic at this refugee camp, I met all these teenage, teenage boys. Myanmar footballers, they are good. They, we play football with them, they are very strong. Every one of them say, I have backache, I have headache, I have this, I have that. Then the next minute, they are playing football, running 10 times faster than me. They are young boys who had to be taken out of their schools and put in refugee camps, otherwise they'll be conscript, conscripted. In 2012, when I first visited the University of Mandalay as part of NUS job, I was telling everybody I know, if I were you, an educator, businessman, anybody, your window for Vietnam, for Myanmar, is small. Move in quickly. And indeed, the window has closed. So now, approximately, perhaps a million displaced people or more. This is just a Thai border. We have not even talked about Cox Bazaar. So God's favor upon us as Singaporeans, whether retirees, we have a passport, we have a culture, we have an acceptability that can bring God's love into borders beyond. Do it. So today I just choose four verses, and these four verses have the same word, favor. And we go through this, it doesn't have to go in one order, you can crisscross at every stage of our life. When we got to mission, we go through these phases. Intercession, action, caution, inaction. So in 1 Samuel, there is this verse, and the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and men. In biblical scholarship, we say that the New Testament is concealed in the Old and the Old Testament is revealed in the New, right? Yeah. So when Luke wrote 2.52, he didn't just pluck it out of air, just like if my students write me an essay, they do citation, they do referencing. So Luke most likely would have cross-referenced back to the Old Testament and saw that this man, Samuel, this boy Samuel, also grew up in favor of Lord and men. But it's a very different context because Hannah, Samuel's mother, was barren. She was infertile, she was marginalized, she was laughed at, she was ridiculed. She was barren. And when she was spraying, they said she was drunk. There was some part of us, comfortable as we are, that cries out to God and say, God, we want to be more fruitful in our lives. We don't want to be barren any longer. We want to reach out. Reach out. So she prays. And God gave a son. And Samuel, the son, grew up in wisdom and stature in the favor of God and man. I think one of the struggles my generation, I'm 63, one of us, is that we have used our resources instead of empowering our youth, we have used it to overly protect our youth. We invest our resources for success, not for service. And that is something we need to repent on. Invest the resources that we have, in not for success, but for service. I feel my Chinese, but there's a difference between 成功 and 成长. 成功 is success. 成长 is grow. We are assured that when we grow and develop, there will be success. But we are not assured that when there's success, there's always growth and development. In fact, it could be empty. So pray. After praying, act on it. In this story, in Genesis, Abraham, again, he knew in all, he knew. This is a, a throwback to the story of the parable of the prodigal son. So Abraham was resting, and strangers come by, and he went out. He's a patriarch. He don't need to go out. 
He can send a servant out. But he went out and welcomed them and said, My Lord, if you now found favor, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and I will bring a morsel of bread that it may refresh your hearts. Abraham, the patriarch, the landowner, humbly asks for favor from those he wants to serve. We have no right to jump in the community and say what we have to say. I joined NUS at 55 or 53. Two things that happened to me. First thing, I have to fill up performance appraiser. I never, you know, the performance personal, I never filled up one before, you know. So I had to fill up, and, and this young 18 year old game staff was teaching me how to fill. So you must make it look very nice, huh, Dr. Tan. Uh, what is your contribution to the department? I put, my contribution. I mean, you all know why I come, I teach, I do this, why must say all over again? They say, must, you must say, make, make it very nice. And I put down there, my contribution department is to come to work with a smile. I submitted it. <laughs> my dean was very nice. Get okay, like yo, we know you smile, but what else do you do? <laughs> wow. First one, action. Right? And the second thing right, is, is really to say, when I entered overseas conferences, I, I get this vibe from people say, oh, you Singapore, authoritarian government, you have no academic freedom. I say, what nonsense. I say academic freedom to me, I have the total freedom to listen to anybody, any paper, read any paper that I want. That is academic freedom. Academic freedom does not mean that I have the freedom to say what everything I think. It's for me that I have the freedom to listen, to read, to study, to explore anything I want. But I don't have the freedom to say everything that I want to say. And the gospel is like that. Abraham say, if I have now found favor in your sight, please let me serve you. And this is the heart of missions, that we go with meekness. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the peacemakers. The Beatitudes is the foundation for us to serve. And let me share a morsel of bread with you. Not, I give you food, ah, I give you hand out. No, no, no. Share a morsel of bread with you so that your heart may be refreshed. So we pray, we intercede, and we jump into action. This picture is taken in Singapore. When was the last time you used a public telephone? Public telephones in Singapore are only found in low-income rental estates. If I give you public telephone now, and I clean the sound and all the saliva. I welcome people to join. Some of us, we just hang out with Jin Sui Road, just in Jalan Kuko, and just learn, learn from the people there. And I asked this lady, what is the public telephone for? I said, oh, very important, call police or call ambulance. People die alone. Caution. Proverbs 31, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but the woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Proverbs 31 is, uh, in my opinion, a misunderstood chapter. If you look at Fridge Magnets, Subtitle for Proverbs 31, many people put there, the virtuous woman or the noble woman. The superwoman, she can wake up in the morning, she can cook, she can sell, she can sew, she can make money, she can feed the poor, she can do everything. One of the good things about missions is learn to be a... They're not used to work better because that one must come from my wife. A different husband. Okay, December coming. If any of you couples are going for holiday, taking a flight, the best thing on the flight is mother check in separately, sit behind far, far away, enjoy the in-flight movie. Father carry the baby because if the mother carry the baby, the world is very biased. If the mother carry the baby and the baby cry, everybody look at you. Woman, look after your baby. If the, if the father carry the baby and no mother around, baby cry, everybody help you, you know. You want milk? You want your change diaper? Also can. <laughs> Missionary tip, okay? <laughs> so yeah, at least one person arrives fresh, lah. Uh, if not, both will be so embarrassed, maybe crying. Okay. Proverbs thirty-one is not about the woman. 
because if the woman can do all these things and achieve success, it is a gospel of works. Christian faith is always a gospel of grace. Read Proverbs 31. It's written to a man. It's written to King Lemuel. In a year, in an era where the women had no status, Proverbs wisdom was written to the men to say, you set the platform for the woman to be virtuous, to be noble, to be successful. And if you do that, it's a gospel of grace. It's just like the church. We, the church, are the bride of Christ. Not because we are good, because Christ is. What I mean to say is that in missions by God's grace, we will have a fair amount of success. And when we are successful, be careful. The foundation is the fear of the Lord, not success. Cannot make success our formula for others to follow. Beauty is this. Favor is deceitful. The same word, and beauty is in vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. In the end, missions is about fearing God. Glory to God. It's authentic faith. Putting the sign seedless grape in front of mangosteen, don't change the mangosteen. <laughs> so, so we inter have intercession, we have action, and we be careful. Because there are times when we have to be still before the Lord. At every time of your life, before you choose your college, when you graduate, when you get, hopefully not, when you get retrenched, in grief, in joy, be still before the Lord and ask, what is the intentional, missional purpose of grace in my life, in my family's life? In Acts 77, this is the story of Stephen. Stephen recounts the history of the nation of Israel and say that David found favor before God and wanted to build a tabernacle, but David couldn't. Solomon did it. We read that when the temple was built and was dedicated, the cloud came down and the priests could not do anything. The mistakes I have made on the mission field is, are often related to uh, the Singaporean desire to fix things which is good, I mean, uh, we get things done, but our problem also, we get things done. So there's time of inaction, of listening, of praying. And the beauty of this is, this qualifies all of us by the grace of God to be able to be part of the missionary task force. What I mean is this, there was once our team was caring for leprosy affected. Leprosy is a dreaded disease. They get blind, they don't feel anymore, they burn themselves, they are ostracized living in a leprosy village far away. And our team, nurses, physiotherapists, eye surgeon, basically ask, what can we do for you? We can dress wounds, uh, we have technicians to modify the pots because the pots, the handle are hot, but they don't feel it, they burn themselves. So we make the, the handle bigger and more padded. This elderly man, leprosy affected, almost blind. Oh, what can we do for you? You can do something for me. He sat us down in the courtyard. Yunnan in winter is a beautiful place, Mediterranean. Okay, blue skies. And we sat down in the courtyard, 15 degrees Celsius. And he went back to his hut, a wooden hut. His blanket was pieces of cloth sewn together, some potato and corn was his meal. And then he brought his erhu. You know erhu? And then he, ee, oh, ee, oh, ee. after two minutes, he stopped. He said, that's all I need you to do for me. Nobody has listened to my music for many years. And you did. That's all. And this is a crying need for us to go. Be with people and listen with the love of Jesus. So that's where we are. Be prayerful, praying across the nations, across the generations. Be ready, serving angels and aliens that come to our shore. Singaporeans, I think we have stopped, stopped loving foreigners. We see them as foreign talent, as competitors, as anything else except someone for us to serve. Be careful. Fear God.
be careful that we substitute our success as development. And be still. Be still to listen. And be ready to serve the next generation. If I may, I wrote this book, uh, Entrance of God's Word Brings Light. It's actually photographs taken by my wife and I on handphone. And uh, we have dedicated all proceeds to St. Luke's Hospital. Their books are paid for. Uh, uh, but you are welcome to take one, put $20 and send it to St. Luke's. If you don't read, get one anyway and leave it there. I'm going to India tonight. I'm going to Darjeeling. And there are many pastors there who will be ready to read. Okay? But anyway, in this book, I concluded with this story about Feng Yun. My children grew up in Yunnan. They go to a neighborhood Chinese school. One of the reasons why we came back was at sec three, I sec two, sec three, I sat my daughter down. I said, you are a teenager. She said, yes. I said, teenager not supposed to study so hard. <laughs> okay, go back to Singapore, easier. Huh? Uh, it's true. Okay, they were studying very hard in China. I said, no, 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 no. But she said, my daughter said, but everybody also study hard in China. She was ready to do the A-levels there. I said, no, 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 cannot, cannot. Come back to Singapore, do A-level, it's easier. It's tough, but it's still easier. <laughs> so 70 students per class. And uh, one day, Amber came back and said, Papa, there's a girl. The school asked for a donation, 50 Roman B. There was 10 days. I said, yeah, give. Why? She said, a girl has bone cancer in Beijing, 2,000 kilometers away. The parents are going to sell the house for treatment. So we are going to gather some money. So I said, good. Do it. But do something more write a card, get to know. That time, no handphone, so they became pen pals. And one day, Amber came back to me and said, Papa, you know what happened today? A girl limped into class. And the only empty seat was beside her. You see, we do something and God will do the rest. And the girl sat down and Amber looked at her and said, 你就是逢音. They said, oh, this is Chunan. They became friends. Pen pal friends, real friends. After a while, sports day. And then I don't came and said, Dad, we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? I said, Feng Yin want to take part in the sports day, the walking race. I said, what's the problem? He says, there's a problem because first prize, six points, second prize, five points, and so on. And she will lose. She gets zero points. What's the problem? He said, but the class is evaluated on academics, on sports, on cleanliness, on behavior, and even the teacher's performance review depends on the class. So should or should not let Feng Yin walk? Sure last, zero points. There's a real cost, C-O-S-T, to take. What will we do? So one day, Amber came back and said, Dad, I think we solved the problem. I said, how do you solve it? He said, we did our research. Aha, uh -huh. what is it? He said, the school rules say, first prize, six points, second prize, five points, and so on. But the school rules also say, if any one of us break the record, double the points. So she said, Feng Yin can walk. We will train hard and one of us will break the record. You see, we pursue excellence so that somebody else can participate in life. This is missions. Excellence in whatever vocation the Lord has given you so that somebody can participate. I wish I had a camera. This is pretty, I said, what happened? She said, oh, Feng Yin was last. And for the last 50 meters, she was in pain. And the teacher went down, held her elbow, and walked to the finish line. The whole class came down and walked with her to the finish line. You know, I'm quite confident nobody remembers who was first. But everybody will remember we walked with Feng Yin. Who soon passed away after that, knowing Jesus as Savior and Lord. So this is the joy before us. Missions is a response to God's grace. Okay. The intercession that Hannah did gave birth to life. Then there's action. Action that calls us out of our comfort zone, of our status, of our security. And then when we are successful by God's grace, we return to meekness and humility. And then we be still. And be still before the Lord. Because He is the one who truly can change hearts. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the grace that you give to us as men, women, families, as a church, 
as a nation. Help us to serve you joyfully. We pray for those around us who are far from you, who do not know your love, who have grown cold in hearts. Oh Lord, have mercy that Lord, we can call out to you again and being still know that you are the good, good Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you for the board games that some of you have brought. Uh, um, like I say, I travel most of my time, I spend about six to nine months a year uh, working with rural communities. The board games are wonderful ways to reach the young people. Uh, so I, have, I see a big collection out there. And uh, this book, again, if I may say, is downstairs. Uh, feel free to purchase one and all proceeds to St. Luke's Hospital. God bless you. Thank you. Indeed, God has spoken clearly to His servant uh, this morning. Missions is having the fear of God in our heart. Missions is responding to the grace of God in our lives. Missions is having people in our hearts. I guess a problem for many of us, myself included, is our heart. It's our heart. It's our heart truly, truly engaged in the very thing that touched the heart of God. That all nations will come to Him. That all peoples of the earth will know Him. That salvation will come to the least, the last, and the lost. So today we need to think, church, where is our heart? Where is our treasure? Where is our priority? So today, I'm going to give some time for us to respond. Not to me, not to the speaker. To God. As we sing this song, as you reflect what God is speaking to you, would you listen? Listen to the still small voice of God. And if you would like prayer, the pastoral team, the prayer team will be here to pray with you. We have time. We have lots of time today. We'll be still before God. No rush, no hurry. Not just another church service, but a time to listen to God. Change my heart, oh God. Make it a Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. 
missions is more than just crossing the seas. Missions is seeing the cross. So as the Lord speaks to your heart, if any one of you just need prayer, just ask the pastoral team, the staff team to just come out first. And in a while, as the team sings the song again, do you need prayer? Just come. Pray for God's strength, God's grace. Perhaps God already has been speaking to your heart. You just need that strength, that, that, that power from above to just move you on to the next step. Your work, place is your mission field. Your family is your mission field. Your neighborhood is your mission field. Your school, your camp. So we just stand together and as the song starts to be sung, do come. Do come if you need prayer. Please stand. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Change my. God is speaking to your heart. Would you respond to it? Time is short. May I be like you? I did a funeral this week. The family was shocked because the family member passed away suddenly overnight. In fact, the family didn't know. He has passed on for a while already. So it can be near, it can be far church. You just need that prayer for a change of heart to respond to God. We just sing the song just one more time. Just, just give one final call. You know, altar calls can be meaningful in some way because it is, can be a milestone in our life. It can be that milestone in our life where God reminds us on that day, God spoke to you and that will encourage you in your spirit church change my heart oh God change my heart oh God do come if you just need that prayer make it ever true come as a family come as a couple come as an individual just come you may not know what is clear ahead, but you say, God, I'll take that step of faith to obey. That step of faith to obey you, God. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart. Oh! 
Continue in prayer, and there's no rush. You may be seated, or you may just turn to someone on your left and right and pray for them, shall we? Yeah, no rush, just linger in the presence of God. The tears God has given you is meaningful because God has spoken to your heart. The tears God has given you are good. Offer your tears to God. Church, let us stand as we just rest in the presence of God. Of 
Church, I invite you all to take a seat and bow your heads in a moment and have some silence as we enter time for intercession. Heavenly Father, you have been faithful. You are always faithful. You have been faithful for all our lives, even when we did not know you. You are faithful because you are a God that keeps your covenant. You are with us always in your steadfast love, your hesed love that endures forever. In your heart, you see all, all who are not saved. And that is why in your word, you've asked us to go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that you have promised that you will be with us to the end of time. And as the message today, the mission field is not just in far-flung places. Yes, it is, but it's so near to our hearts, in our homes, in our families, our workplace, our schools, the man in the street. Indeed, Father, all my life, you have been faithful. All our lives, you, you have been faithful. If not for missions, the people you sent out, the people you use, the ordinary people like us that you use to reach out, we would not be here today, Lord. We would not have the promise and the blessing of eternal life. So, Father, I just ask that you put in each and everyone's heart here someone that you want them to reach out to and that you change their heart. You give them the strength. You give them the courage. Church, it's not, our, it's not us to win people over, but to share the message because the work of faith belongs to you, Lord. And Father, we also pray for the Diocese of Singapore, in particular for the deaneries of Thailand and Laos. We ask that you strengthen the dean, Kenny Yi Ching Wah, and anoint him with wisdom and your love that outpours into the people that he comes across with. May you use him mightily to bring about growth in conversions and discipleships in Thailand and Laos. Specifically, we pray for the Dniri of Thailand for the following. Father, will you bring about a successful resolution of serious IT incursions into the Wi-Fi network of Sri Aunda School in Chiang Mai that has caused many devices to be infected with malware since June last year? For Christchurch, Bangkok, we pray that English and Thai congregations may strengthen their relationship and ministry cooperation to present a common witness for Christ. For the Dinria Laos, we ask that you make a way for the provision of finances and for teachers to fill the need. And with that to come, we also pray for unity amongst the workers in the Dinuri and a renewed vision of using business for missions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our very own St. James Church, we lift up our prayers to you, O Lord, for our Tier 1 missions focus. Christchurch Ban Chang in Thailand. 
May you lead Pastor Man, who leads the church there, in your wisdom and discernment. Anoint him with a sensing of what you want, in the inspiration of the church vision and plans for the coming year in 2025. We ask that you strengthen the children and youth ministries and also bring about growth in evangelism and caring for visitors and those exploring the faith for your glory. May you work in a way never felt before in that church to bring about church members who will diligently care for one another's needs and to grow in your ways. We pray also for the provision of finances for us Christmas initiatives and for their church renovation works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world, we pray for the United States, which just concluded its presidential elections. We pray for a healing of the divide that has emerged in that country between the ultra-liberal movements and the conservatives. May you guide and lead President Trump in that healing and to bring about changes that you want, Lord, in that country that was founded on your ways. With the recent anti-Semitic attacks in Amsterdam that reveal deep issues embroiling European countries, that such rhetorics had to result in, result in violence. We pray for the victims and for peace to prevail, not just in Holland, but in all European countries. We also continue to pray for the ongoing wars in Ukraine and the Middle East and the persecutions of Christians in the Middle East and various African countries. May your truth, justice, and righteousness break through any veil of deception and reign over all to bring about an end to all these wars and persecutions. May you comfort and bring peace to all that are affected by the conflicts. Lord, in your mercy. For our own nation of Singapore, we pray for you, Lord, to move afresh in the marketplace. May you awaken a spiritual hunger in pre-believers to seek you and your truth. May you move the believers in the marketplace to see their careers as ministry, serving the needs of others, and a platform to be a witness for you and to display an authentic relation with you. We pray for business leaders to turn to you and become spiritually transformed in their leadership over their organizations and thereby exposing many to your goodness so that they may see and taste that you are good, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Finally, Heavenly Father, we pray for ourselves and for those whom we know who are suffering in both body, mind and spirit. Church, let us take a few moments of silence and pause. Lift up anyone we know suffering as such to the Lord by name. Lord, for each of the names just lift up to you in prayer. We ask that you grant them your peace and comfort. Strengthen them in their body, mind and spirit. And by your grace and mercy, wherever needed, we ask that you bring about healing in your perfect timing and will. And finally, we want to bring ourselves before you, Lord, as we return our tithes and give to you our offerings. We thank you for your gracious provision in our lives. And we pray that you may use what we offer for your glory and the extension of your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept this praise for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, let us stand. Prepare to return our tithes. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire The darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God
Thanks be to God. Please have a seat. Well, well welcome to the 9 a.m. service at St. James Church. Especially if you're here for the first or second time, we want to welcome you in the name of the Lord. Would you just raise your hand for a short while, first time with us? Anyone here? Wonderful. Welcome. 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 It's right at the back on the left. Welcome to St. James Church. Please join us for breakfast. Church, why don't we just take a few moments to say hi and greet one another in the Lord. Wonderful. Do catch up more with one another in a Christian fellowship over breakfast at the plaza. So just a few notices for us, and uh, we continue to uh, encourage us to pray, to invite friends for our Christmas evangelistic services on the 21st and the 22nd of December. That weekend will be designated as uh, evangelistic services. Christmas Eve, no service this year, but we are going out to the Holland V area to share uh, the joy of Christmas. So uh, there's still time to sign up. So there is uh, uh, the signing up. Uh, do speak to any of our staff. And on Christmas Day itself, Christmas service at 11 a.m. Do take note. Second, Christmas caroling. We are also happy to go to your homes to sing carols. So you can invite friends, families to come to your home, and then our, our church team of carolers will come to your home to sing uh, carols. So do let us know also, do sign up and let us know if your home can be available for our church caroling team to come. Thirdly, this month is Missions Month uh, as we uh, commit this month to, to remember and to encourage us in missions. There will be a special collection next weekend for the church missions fund. The PCC will then decide on the amount that will go towards the diocese's gospel work in the six uh, deaneries. Next week, when you come, mission envelopes will be provided to you, for you to present your mission givings to the Lord during the time of offertory, as in previous years. Giving can be by cash, or if it's by check, do take note that right behind for missions fund. And of course, you can also give via digital uh, internet giving uh, through the missions fund Q, QR code. Uh, fourth announcement. There's two weeks' time, there will be a confirmation uh, service. Bishop uh, John Chiu will be here to confirm close to almost 50 brothers and sisters from both the English and Mandarin uh, services. So that weekend, there will be no Saturday service, confirmation service on 24th Sunday, and it will be at 10 a.m. Only one service uh, that uh, weekend. So do remember uh, these names. Uh, these are those from our English uh, serv services, and then the balance will be from the Chinese uh, uh, service. So uh, it's right now my joy to have with us our dear brother and pastor, Kenan Yichingwa. Uh, as we know, he's uh, the dean of Thailand, and uh, he's also now given the appointment as the dean of Laos, and we have invited him to share what God is doing in Thailand. Pastor Chingwa, please. Thank you, Pastor John. Good morning. It's so good to be with you, and uh, it's been an eventful year for us. Um, so my wife uh, relaunched the Cornerstone Student Center, which is an outreach to university student, together with a young lady, 23-year-old, Angelina Hayborn. Uh, for those of you who grew up with her, she was from our gym, right? And uh, she gave a year to the Lord for, uh, to be a volunteer to serve alongside Siwling. And both of them have created uh, a home for many of these university students. And they just come in and hang out. Uh, very quickly, they could gather a group of people and came to Singapore for the immersion program. These are pre-selected uh, because they are very regular with us. And you have met them. So thank you for your part in welcoming them. And we asked them, why, why do you come? They say, this is a safe space. 
this is a place they find healing. Uh, we have people who came totally fearful, don't dare to relate to people, but today they are so joyful. Their laugh is so uh, hearty, right? And uh, both young men and women. Some come from homes that parents have nothing good to say to them. But here they found encouragement to grow. So when I, uh, uh, so Hebon is going to extend for another one to two years. And her sister Tiffany also joined her and intending to also to extend the service. So I asked them, you are young, uh, what about your own personal life, your career? She, she said, things back home, other people can do. If I go home, who will spend time with the students? <laughs> so that touched our hearts, really. And this is what Cornerstone is about. It's about life. Uh, material things can be helpful, but really you need lives to touch lives, right? So we, thank God, this is, uh, I forgot, no? So, so talk about this. So this uh, angel, angel, the students that hang out regularly with us. Uh, yeah, if, you, if you're here long enough, the first batch of English immersion program students who came here almost 10 years ago, one of them, the first convert, is now a lecturer in the university. He completed his PhD. And he's also in the management of the uh, engineering faculty. And he, with his influence, got university money to run an English camp uh, June this year. And they are planning for one more next year. And 50 students came, and some of you uh, also form a team to support the, the work uh, in June this year. So thank God for that opening. It's a fruit that now uh, is reproducing fruit to bring others to know Jesus uh, through very simple means of language leading to life. Amen. Uh, this is a photo of the team that came and the students, EIP students who came, uh, they came to church that Sunday. So uh, we thank God one has already received Christ. Two or three are beginning to be regular in church. Yeah. So we pray for more engagement like this. Yeah. Also thank you for your uh, contributions that enabled us to start the Lakabang Phase 1B project. We had the groundbreaking service, 3rd of August. You see the bell there? The bell was the first piece of thing to be completed for this project. It symbolizes the purpose of our mission there, is to declare God's glory, right? Um, and then the foundation stone late that day is laid on a prayer store constructed of concrete. This prayer store will be installed directly below the bell because the decoration must be un undergirded by prayer. Right? You, you can't see that white thing. That one is actually a prayer store made of concrete. So this is a symbolism of what we intend to do. We've been doing the last 10 to 12 years in Lakabang. Right? Um, so, so what a joy eh, to see children have a part, the next generation to break the ground together. This is a launch meeting with the contractor, architect, and the project manager. In a country with so, many, so few Christians, we have all three parties, architect, contractor, and uh, project managers, all Christian, committed to do this thing for the Lord. That's why we could keep the thing within budget. Otherwise, uh, the next bidder who came in is 25% above our budget. And the work is so fast, I tell you, it's 25 days ahead of schedule. Uh, the piling started in September. Uh, this is October 28th doing the, the, the scaffolding for first floor. And uh, this is just last week. And I got the uh, picture yesterday. They gave me a daily report. They were already pouring concrete for the second floor for the church. Uh, this is a kindergarten block. Yeah, they are doing up the foundation, the lift well, and so on. Good. So uh, we... We want to thank you for remembering this uh, and partnership in this mission. 
personally, um, it has been a very eventful year. Uh, being asked also to look after Laos is a completely new work because it's a context with very complex bureaucracy and so, so sensitivity in how we approach the sharing of the gospel. Nonetheless, the mission is the same. I told the team, I got a good t we got a good team down there. Whatever platform we use, language teaching, skills development, it leads to the gospel, but it doesn't stop at the gospel. And it doesn't stop at discipleship. It must go beyond to forming discipleship into a worshipping community. And not just one worshipping community, but several around the country network together so that they can be a national witness of the gospel uh, forward for that country. So uh, uh, do pray for that development. Next week I'll be there uh, uh, to also to have a meeting with the chairman of the Lao Evangelical Fellowship on how we could be uh, a helpful present in that country together with the other Christian body, right? Uh, on the personal front, we got all the way. We got promoted to be grandparent this year. <laughs> and, uh, next year, double promotion. <laughs> so one coming in June, uh, in uh, February, one coming in April. The April one qualified for some government something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got four more years before hitting 65. And it's a season of sowing into the next generation. Strangely, not strangely, sovereignly, the Lord has brought into our church a group of young men, men, no, not, not ladies, young men. Usually you've got more women coming to church, right? These are a group of young men in their early 30s. We didn't know them beforehand. But when we came interested to explore the gospel going to church they choose the Anglican church these are very well read young people why? because they say they don't quite like the hype they feel uh, it's maybe a lot of air they went to the Catholic church, they like it but they prefer a Protestant teaching <clears throat> so they search, they read, they say, okay, Anglicans, these are the middle way people who love the scripture and love the Lord. So they, they came and found us in Christchurch, Bangkok, and also in Lakabang. So uh, these are the group of people that the Lord has brought in. We pray we can nurture them uh, to be um, workers for the harvest field. Uh, one has already joined staff. I, I, she, he came five years ago. And one more, I just received news last week. He sends a calling to come full time as well. So these are uh, the generation that is to come, right? I think, uh, given the limited time, is the next generation that need to arise. So thank you for all your support and prayer. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Chingwa. The church continue to uphold Pastor Chingwa and his wife Xiu Ling in prayer. Yeah, let the young people know uh, in, when going to heaven, queuing up. The Anglicans will be first, first letter A, so followed by brethren. Uh, so B. <laughs> Just kidding. The last but not least, uh, we thank God there will be a team of brothers uh, leaving for Ban Chang. We prayed for the ministry just now, uh, Ban Chang Church, Christ Church Ban Chang, and particularly ministering to uh, Rayon, Rayon uh, Prison at Ban Chang. So we'd like to invite the team now in church, uh, Asvika, to uh, commission them as they leave for this uh, important work. Yeah. So, mission team, please. Um, well, this team, yeah, many of you will recognize, uh, some of them are involved in our heal ministry. That's why they are going into the uh, prisons to minister to the prisoners in Lakrabang side, right? Or rather in Rayon. And I thought, you know, before we pray, been reminded from what Paul wrote to the Philippians. And I think the reminder today, even as Dr. Tan uh, shared with us, reading from Philippians 2, verse 5 and 6. And Paul is saying in the NIV, in your relationships, 
with one another and with people that you're going to meet. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something not to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. So as you go, may you find favour. May you have God's favour to share with all these and give them the hope that is in Jesus. Amen? Come, let's pray. We invite you all to stretch out your hands. Let's come in, our brothers and sisters. Lord, we thank you. May you lead this team, even as uh, Jason leads this team, as they go forth, Holy Spirit, endow them with your very presence. Open the doors with the favour as they humbly serve, as Jesus served us as a man. Yes, Lord, you have given us many privileges and may these be used not for ourselves but to serve these brothers who are in prison, incarcerated, that they may have the hope that comes from the gospel of grace. Bridge every communication gap because, Lord, your presence and the hands, the feet that goes forth and serve them, may they reflect the same love that you have for us. Watch over them, give them protection as they travel, grant them the joy that overflows that will also touch these brothers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rika. So the team will be away. 13, they fly off and then back on the 19. So during that week, do keep them in prayer. So gentle reminder, thank you for those who have brought games for for Dr. Tan to bring to Darjeeling, India. So we have left a table out at, uh, just at the leaf lobby. If you have brought them, you can just drop them off. And thank you very much. You know, before service, I talked to Dr. Tan. He was telling me, you know, John, uh, tennis ball, tennis ball can do wonders. So I'm, uh, he didn't ask me, but I'm doing a promotion for him for his future trips. So I know many of you play tennis, right? And then maybe the ball a little bit, okay, lah, not so whatever, lah, but still can use. Huh? Don't throw away. Okay, bring to church. Bring to church. We have a temporary temp tennis court in our office. I know. Yes, sir. Uh, we would we'll, we'll, we'll like you to bring your tennis balls and we'll collect. And then for his future trips, he can bring and to bless uh, many, many children. So the book uh, that Dr. Tan mentioned is uh, at the table at the plaza. So do collect the book. Uh, uh, proceeds, all proceeds will go towards St. Luke's Hospital Chaplaincy Fund to, to do the spiritual work at the hospital. Church, please stand as we receive God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among you and your loved ones, both now and forevermore. Amen. Church, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. In the morning. Spread till the storm was smooth for good for the land that conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the songs of.
this is over. We'll see you at the breakfast table.